I don't know what to say, the monkeys won't do. Don't know what to say, the monkeys won't do. There once was a time when Sega actually let their dev teams experiment with their creativity and produce some pretty awesome games besides just Sonic the Hedgehog. Games like Knights into Dreams, Billy Hatcher and the Giant Egg, Rice Star, and Choo Choo Rocket were examples of this experimentation, and for the most part, Sega just could not miss. During this time, one of Sega's second party developers, Amusement Visions, created a prototype of a ball rolling puzzle game where you had to guide the ball through a 3D maze to a goal at the end. Sound familiar? This was the basis of Super Monkey Ball, which would become one of Sega's most beloved franchises. The prototype was highly favored, but the team was worried that just having a ball rolling around wouldn't be very appealing, so they used an internal designer's concept of a cute monkey character and stuck him inside the ball, and all was right in the world. The game was thus completed and released on the Sega Naomi. Yeah, Super Monkey Ball on the GameCube is not actually the first game in the series. Monkey Ball first released on the Sega Naomi arcade system, which I covered before in the Azamag Daya Puzzle Bubble video, in 2001. Besides the graphics not being as complex, the core game is exactly the same as the enhanced port that came to GameCube, just without the banana-shaped joystick. I won't spend too much time with the original Monkey Ball, primarily focusing on the GameCube games. This one is a double review. I'm covering both Super Monkey Ball 1 and 2 for the Nintendo GameCube. So let's jump right in. Like I mentioned earlier, Super Monkey Ball is all about guiding a monkey in a ball through a tricky maze to get to the goal at the end. You achieve this by tilting the course itself using the analog stick, guiding said monkey along the increasingly complex and dangerous courses. These monkeys are Ai Ai, Mimi, Baby, and Gong Gong. Don't worry, the differences are cosmetic. You can choose whatever monkey you like without anything changing in the gameplay. Anyway, when you get to the goal, your monkey shoots upwards towards the next stage. If you fall off the stage at any time, you'll lose a life. And you also lose a life if the timer at the top of the screen runs out. This timer is usually set for 60 seconds, but sometimes the stage demands a shorter time at 30 seconds. Stages aren't always static, there will be moving objects and physics-based puzzles thrown around, as well as stages that test your knowledge of how gravity works. It's a bit tamer in the first game, but the second game really cranks up the amount of things moving in each level, which is both amazing and frustrating. I'll get to that later. You only use the analog stick to move the monkey around. The only other controls are to pause the game or press A to change the size of the minimap. The game is split into three difficulties, beginner, advanced, and expert, each with their own levels spread across different environmental themes. While your path is usually laid out for you, which is helped by the overview the camera gives you before starting each level, there will be times when there's a harder path with another goal, and if you make it to that goal, you can skip a level. The amount of levels you skip from hitting an extra goal depends on the level and the game you're playing, but I've been able to skip up to 3 levels from a single goal. Every 5 or 10 levels there will be a bonus stage, where your goal is to collect all the bananas before time runs out. Speaking of bananas, they're this game's coins or rings. They add to your score, and collecting 100 of them grants you an extra life. I do have a bit of an issue with this, however. 100 bananas seems like a very steep requirement for an extra life, especially since in some levels bananas are very scarce. Yes, there are the bonus stages, but I don't really think that counts. Setting 50 bananas as the one-up requirement would have been a bit more fair in my book. Anyway, that's pretty much it when it comes to the core gameplay. The stages continue on as such, and you play through until you clear all the levels or run out of lives. In that case, you're granted up to 5 continues, starting off with a fresh set of lives after each one. You use up all 5 of those continues though, and the game ends. However, if you can clear all of the levels without using a continue, you can move on to the extra stages, which are, well, extra levels that add a little more challenge. In the higher difficulties, if you manage to beat the extra stages without using a continue, you get to face the master stages, the absolute hardest levels in the game. Good flipping luck. Super Monkey Ball 2 continues these traditions as well, bringing in dozens of brand new stages, slightly refined controls, better visuals, the works. The levels introduced in this game really raise the bar for how a Monkey Ball level should be constructed, and it gives plenty of opportunities for the player to think outside the box about how to reach the goal, or even take shortcuts. Rolling around at the speed of crap! Super Monkey Ball 2 also introduces a new separate mode, Story Mode, where all the game's levels are packaged into worlds of 10 levels each, not counting bonus stages. The story follows Ai Ai and his friends needing to get the world's bananas back from the evil scientist Dr. Bad Boom, who also wants to marry Mimi for some reason. She, of course, shoots him down because, you know, he's Dr. Bad Boom, and <laughs> What is that face? <laughs> it looks more like his favorite sports team just lost the tournament instead of his marriage slash extortion proposal shot down. <laughs> anyway, uh... <clears throat> 
Anyway, uh, story mode is simply another way of playing through the game, just with cutscenes and some different locations for each level. The standard challenge mode is still here and works the same way as in the first game. However, I'd like to rag on the bonus stages for a moment. In the original game, like I said before, bonus stages challenged you to grab all the bananas before time runs out. In this game, however, it feels like the challenge was changed to get as many as possible before you eventually run out of time. The bonus stages feel like they were designed to stop you from being able to get every single banana before the timer stops. I've never been able to get all the bananas in any of them. For example, look at this level here. It's a maze that feels like it was designed in a way that no matter what path I took or how fast I went through it, there was zero chance of me collecting all the bananas. Or this level, which is literally pachinko, designed in a way that you cannot get back up if you go too far down. If that frustrates you, there's a goalpost in each level so you can just move on, but that does disappoint me quite a bit. But what isn't disappointing, if I can butt in here for a moment, is that I'm starting a second channel. I mentioned before that I'm a hobbyist musician, and I've been looking for a place to put my stuff. As well, I've been getting into making NES-style covers, as you might have seen with my release of the Sonic 3 NES soundtrack mod for Sonic 3 Air. So I've been looking for a place to put those that doesn't interfere with my normal content. Even though I'm interfering with my normal content by advertising this here, but anyway. This channel, for the time being, is called Artisian Music. Coming up with clever channel names is harder than I thought, and I plan on doing weekly releases of music, both from my backlog and of stuff I'm currently working on. Songs I use in my videos here, such as the Jaw parody song from SS Reviews Pen Pen Triesalon, as well as Chiptune covers, will be there. Maybe even some original songs, if I can, you know, let go of the tight grip I have on them. When I say Chiptune, I don't mean just NES music anymore. Thanks to me learning Defle Mask, I'm now creating Sega Genesis covers. Now this is going to differ from my old series, Remixes in True SMPS, because these new covers aren't just MIDI imports, they're created from scratch, like my NES covers. I create the instruments myself besides the drum samples, and I sequence the song myself, tailoring the music to the hardware better, which means less limitations than before, and better sounding music. Anyways, again, the channel is called Artisian Music. There will be a link in the description, as well as a card above if post-edit me can figure out how that works. So please check it out. Weekly uploads to the channel start next month, and I'll kick these off with two videos, an NES cover and a Genesis cover, both of which I have not released yet. Okay, getting back on track with Super Monkey Ball here, the level design in both games gradually increases in difficulty and complexity as you go along, but it usually doesn't spike. However, there are exceptions, especially in the second game, but we're going to take a look at the first game to begin with. Here's one level I got stuck on really badly. The game expects you to gain enough speed to dash over these gaps and knock yourself onto the platform. Much easier said than done. The game's full of moments where you have to have the exact right amount of speed in order to clear an obstacle and it gets annoying after a while. Then there's levels with mandatory pathways so thin that you can't afford to tilt the wrong way whatsoever or else you'll fall. Or let's say you don't feel like tilting off the stage. Well, you won't like this one. Not impossible, but very challenging. In Super Monkey Ball 2, you have two levels in the advanced stages that I think need to be expert stages. This one, and this one. I HATE these two levels, because it feels like reaching the goal is all luck based. No matter how hard I try to nail a pattern, I always end up losing dozens of times, then I end up making it to the goal from sheer luck. Even some of the hardest expert stages don't compare to the pain I had dealing with these two, but I can think of some ways to improve them. The main challenge for this one is making it to the top, right? So instead of rounded edges to this platform, make them straight paths that curve up. That way, your main goal remains getting to the top, and that is the sole challenge, with no randomness thrown into us. As for this one, it's simple. Make it all one platform. With the gaps in the platform gone, your goal is just to avoid the walker and time your approach to the goal. Much better. It's one thing to gradually and properly challenge the player, which the game usually does. But when you throw curveballs like this into your level design, it becomes much less enjoyable. If these levels were to stay as they are, they should have belonged in the expert category. Funny enough, I don't have any problems with the levels in Expert, because it feels like just the right amount of challenge at the right pace. And that's not to say I didn't get frustrated, it just it just didn't bug me at the level that the advanced levels did. With that said, whose idea was this last level in the Expert section? It's not that it wants me to do anything overly difficult, it's just there are so little chances to actually position the monkey in the right path to the goal. Puzzles that feel like you have a random chance of succeeding are not fun. But this level honestly didn't frustrate me nearly as much as the previous two levels I mentioned did. We can't go home yet though, because Super Monkey Ball isn't just about the ball rolling. There are tons of mini-games as well. The first game has six mini-games, the second game has new versions of them, as well as an additional six, making it a total of 12 mini-games. You don't have all of them unlocked right away though, so you need to play the main game, 
to earn play points to unlock them. Each minigame is worth 2,500 play points, so that usually accounts for a full run through the advanced course. Nothing really happens in the first game once you have all the minigames, but once all the minigames are unlocked in the second game, you are then given access to a shop where you can use extra play points to buy cutscenes from the story mode, the ability to play the credits at any time, and extra lives for the challenge mode. Once you do this, you can set how many lives you start with in challenge mode, but the higher you set it, the less play points you can earn in the end. So I bought all the minigames. What are they? Let's begin with the lineup for the first game. That gives us Monkey Race, Monkey Fight, Monkey Target, Monkey Bowling, Monkey Billiards, and Monkey Golf. Monkey Race is a multi-lap race on a closed track for four local players and four additional AI players. Monkey Fight is a four-way battle with monkeys with boxing gloves attached to their balls to get the most points or to stay on the map the longest. Monkey Target has you gliding in the air and fighting wind resistance to land on the target in the middle of the water. And Monkey Bowling, Billiards, and Golf are basically straightforward, since those games rely all on aiming, applying enough force, and watching what happens. You'd really need to enjoy the sports the latter three games are based on to get the most out of it, since they're longer and require more patience. But I feel Race, Fight, and Target are engaging enough that anyone can pick it up and get into it quickly. My personal favorite of those three is Monkey Fight, because it's fast and frantic, leaving you little time to plan strategies and forcing you to just get into the thick of it. These games also have power-ups akin to something like Mario Kart. Race has its banana peels, ice cubes, polygon, boost, and enlarging power-ups, and Fight has upgrades to the boxing gloves like spinning, longer, and ironclad attacks. Target doesn't really have this, but you can collect bananas along the way, so that's something. Super Monkey Ball 2 introduces new stages and elements for this preceding mini games, which honestly has much better level design. In Monkey Fight in particular, I felt like there was too much getting in your way during the fight in the first game, so I'm glad to see the levels in the second game are much simpler and easier to handle. The game then adds six new mini games on top of that. Monkey Boat, Monkey Shot, Monkey Dogfight, Monkey Soccer, Monkey Baseball, and Monkey Tennis. Monkey Boat is a boat racing game with some of the weirdest controls I've ever seen in a minigame. You have to alternate pressing the left and right triggers to simulate rowing the boat, and to turn, you have to press one trigger repeatedly. It's strange. I suppose with a little practice I can get the hang of it, but it definitely wasn't something I was going to get right on my first try. Monkey Shot is an on-rails shooting game. Yep, that's the game. You have six shots before you have to reload, and enemies can shoot back, there's a boss fight at the end of the course, and that's about it. It's interesting, but I'm not really going to come back to it, but I did enjoy the time I spent on it. Monkey Dogfight, however, is a bit clunky. Take the controls from Monkey Target, take out the wind resistance, and give the monkeys shotguns and missile launchers. And there you have it. You attempt to fly around and shoot each other, being able to lock on and shoot guided missiles, as well as standard bullets. Let me just say the guided missiles are the only way you're ever going to defeat someone. Flying is so stiff that I can't turn around fast enough to shoot someone that's shooting at me. And more often than not, I end up turning around only to get a rocket in the kisser. Being honest, don't spend much time on this one, it wasn't all that fun. The next three games fall in the same category as bowling, billiards, and golf in the way that you need to have patience and really enjoy said sports to get the most of them. Okay, never mind, Monkey Soccer is a complete mess. The footage you're seeing here shows exactly how little control I had over the monkeys. Honestly, I was mashing buttons and pressing random directions the whole time hoping that my monkeys would do something useful. Half the time, I think I was even scoring on my own goal. That's how confused I was. Super Mario Strikers? This ain't. Monkey Baseball is a little more fair than soccer, but eh, I still don't really care for it. Instead of waiting for the monkeys to run while the ball gets tossed around, you hit the ball, which is the pitcher monkey, towards any of the back plates, which determines how many bases your monkey can run, if you don't hit the panel that gets you out. Players alternate between pitching and batting, but when you pitch, you can speed up, slow down, and turn all over at any time to completely throw off the batter. And when you're the one that's batting, that's very annoying. It becomes such a one-sided game after a while, so yeah, yeah, not really a fan of this one either. The last one, which I think is the most fair and decent of the three, is Monkey Tennis. It's not as complex as Sega Superstars, or as involved as Wii Sports, but it's not bad. It's tennis, not much more than that. I suppose I can't complain too much. These are mini-games for a reason. They're meant to be a distraction from the main game and nothing more. So knocking the whole game's quality based on a couple of mini-games I didn't end up liking isn't very fair. So the game gets credit where it's due on the important things. 
The best of the mini games, like Monkey Race, Fight, and Target, are fantastic games that I'd recommend anybody try. But as well, I'd like to stress that these mini games are best enjoyed with multiple people. Yes, it's fun to play by yourself most of the time, but it's best to have a friend along as well. After all, that's what the games are here for, multiplayer. There is multiplayer in the main game as well, I'm not really sure why, but it's here. It works, but if I'm playing the main game, I prefer to do it by myself. Moving on to presentation, visually, if I had never seen these games before, and someone told me they were Wii games or even something from a later generation, I'd honestly believe them. These are beautiful games, ones that really take advantage of the GameCube's hardware. The original Monkey Ball looked okay, and I imagine that's what it would have looked like if it was ported to the Dreamcast instead, but I absolutely love the visuals here. Later games in the series would develop a more cartoony look for the environments and characters, and while I have mixed opinions on that, I can confidently say the first two games on GameCube are gorgeous. The terrain, objects, and monkeys all stand out so you're not distracted by what's going on in the background, and the level themes, especially in the second game, are very unique and pretty to look at. It's like looking at a painting that's been lovingly crafted and put on display for all purple lunchbox owners to enjoy. Did I just compare fine art to a game about monkeys and plastic balls? Let's uh, move on to the audio presentation. While the music fits the time period and locations, I feel like the second game has more standout tracks than the first game. Actually, if I'm being honest, I like the soundtrack of the original Monkey Ball more than I do Super Monkey Ball. I don't know, I, I don't really care for the instrumentation or the melodies of that game's soundtrack. The second game has some real bangers though, and I actually want to find a proper soundtrack for the second game. The Monkey Race and Monkey Target themes especially are my favorites. I could listen to those all day long. I can't really think of anything else to go over, so I guess it's time to wrap things up. Super Monkey Ball 1 and 2 are great games, and I'd recommend that anyone who still has a GameCube or a backwards compatible Wii go pick them up. I got my copies pretty cheap, I bet y'all can find some good deals on them. Even if you're just looking for something quick to play, or if you got an afternoon off and need to kill a bunch of time, Super Monkey Ball 1 and 2 will have something appropriate for any of those moods. Ugh, I'm so burnt out, I gotta quit playing video games for a while on this channel. Huh? Alright, one more stop before I take a break. Thanks once again for watching my videos. Be sure to give it a like, subscribe, and hit the bell to stay on top of new uploads. And again, Art to See and Music starts up next month, so please consider subscribing there too. See you guys next month with another video. Bye!